For those of you just joining us, this is our 1984 salvaged mobile home. We bought this property as an investment and they told us that the home had essentially no value. So we were buying it for the land, but we decided that this home does have value and that we were gonna rebuild it. So we stripped it down, repaired all the rot, and now we're rebuilding it from the ground up, but actually from the top down because we're working on the roof first. So over the last week, we've been working on getting the wooden purlins, the wooden battens on the roof of our house here. And we're only working on this side right here so far, which is the back. All the wood is on the roof. We got our metal drip edge installed and now today is metal day. So hopefully we can get some metal panels on the roof. Now this is gonna start slow and then it should speed up because the first panel we got to be extra careful on. The first panel sets the whole tone of the day. So now there's five sheets here. That's looking good. I got this top sheet marked out for my holes. We're gonna pre-drill 10 sheets. That might be overdoing it a little, but I just wanna get them over with. Pre-drilling means I don't have to mark every single sheet for the screws. I'll know exactly where they go. And it should speed up the job. It's honestly a little bit scary drilling through 10 sheets of your brand new roofing, but it is gonna make the job a lot easier as long as I got them all in the right spots. So I think everything is looking good. I'm gonna carry the first sheet up and we'll just try to get it aligned. Now the question is, how do we check that? Let me just check if we're still at two inches. Just maybe like, Reach over as far as you can. I think the best way to do it is stick the tape measure under there. I made it with another sheet. Mm -hmm. Okay, you hold it. I'll come down here and check out the bottom. You got it? Not yet. Is that good? And make sure that edge is good. 
It's, let me get this corner tacked in. We know there's nowhere else for this to go. Okay. We don't know if our drip cap is perfectly straight, but we're maintaining pretty well. You got that ended in pretty good? This one? Yeah. Foster screw. <laughs> Guys, this is where I believe a drill driver like this really shines. It's when you need to take it easy. You got these rubber gaskets. A lot of people ask why we don't use an impact driver. And there's a lot of situations like this where I'd rather have more control with a drill driver. You get more control, you can go slower, steadier, and you can really feel the screw. And an impact is just more aggressive. Sometimes that's the reason, mostly, it's because this is quiet. You know? Yeah. Look at it compared to the old one. Ew. And I think, ah. I think that gray is looking good. Yeah. Come on, get it. <laughs> These screws are nice. Three sheets done. I'm gonna have one leg longer than the other by the time we get done. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should bring this up, but every time we do a roof, all one times, people have said that we're lapping the wrong way. Mm -hmm. The edge with the foot goes down on the wood or on the decking, on the roof. And then the short edge laps, the short piece overlaps. I know some people do it backwards, but that's the wrong way. And this is the correct way to have this First. on the roof. Yep. Underneath the lap. And you can't even tell if you were looking. That's just the way it is. Here, here's how it overlaps over here. It goes just like that over the, the thing. The rib. I'm at like two and an eighth. We are going down. Slowly, we're going down. Oh, so, that's too much. Yeah, we gotta start pulling it back. If I do this, if I just compress this a little bit, I know it's hard with that loose, but if I just compress it a little bit, the next sheet will be angled upwards a little bit. Mm-hmm. So we'll tighten that one up. I can take this and where it's sitting naturally, and you see, I can, I can kind of compress this back. Yeah, just a hair. And what that's gonna do is, is my next sheet is now gonna be in a new alignment. Yeah. Now it's hard to know exactly where this needs to be without that sheet, but we're gonna just 
We're just gonna guess. I'm gonna push it up like that. Okay. So now we have a new parallel line to run off of. And then we'll check it on our next sheet. If we need more correction, we'll do that one a little more. Mm -hmm. Good thing it's not too windy. A little bit of wind. It really blows it around. Wow, it looks so white in the sun, doesn't it? Yeah. Could you imagine how much brighter a white panel would look? Yeah. All right, you got it? I do now. So yeah, we bought a metal roof. It's just a standard ribbed roofing. We got 29 gauge standard thin roof. We want to keep it lightweight. With the two by four straps that we put on the roof and the metal roofing, we're only adding less than two pounds per square foot on a house. Two pounds per square foot. That's not too bad. It's about the lightest you can get a roof. Now this home wasn't built with heavy weight in mind. In fact, it's rated with the state minimum 20 pound per square foot load rating. So that's why we're trying extra hard to keep this roof lightweight. Now you would think that with a 20 pound per square foot rating, load rating, and us not being in a snow zone, we don't get any snow, that we would be fine adding another couple pounds to the roof. But there's another thing that people don't think of when they think of roof load ratings. They always think of snow load, but there's actually such a thing as wind load. If you're in a high wind area, like we are potentially in a high wind area, when the wind is blowing and it's hitting that sloped roof, it's putting pressure on the roof. It's actually putting weight on the roof. And wind can be pretty powerful. You know, hold up a sheet of plywood on a windy day and you'll see how much force that wind can have. So picture the wind is hitting your roof, pushing down on it. And that's why it needs a weight rating on these roofs because you'd be surprised at how heavy that wind is. So that 20 pounds is the minimum for the wind weight, wind pressure. So every pound you add takes away from that and weakens your roof. So even though you think, oh, I'm never going to have X amount of pounds on my roof. Uh, it's that invisible wind weight that you got to think about. Whoa, my feet are wet from that grass. I gotta be careful. Mm-hmm. It stays damp in the shade. You have to go up a little. Hi. When you buy panels from a roofing supplier, if you can find a metal roof supplier in your area, it's so much better. The price of this roofing was much less than if we bought it at like Home Depot or Lowe's. It was like a lot less. And they cut it to length and you pay for what you need. You don't have to buy an eight foot sheet and cut it yourself. You notice we're just throwing these up. They're perfect. They're already pre-cut for us. We don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, so definitely shop around if you're going to do a metal roof and order it from a, a metal roof supplier and you'll get a better, it's just better. Plus they can figure out all the trims that you need and... Oh, they just, I just say everything and they just give me all the screws, all the lengths, the caps, the flashings, every, the sealant. Yeah, they figure out... I don't even out, have to tell them what I want. They figure out how many panels you'll need and yeah. everything.
This is going actually pretty quick. There it is so far. Look at the difference. Nice. Sometimes I rub it on the grass a little bit. Just in case you finish anything stuck to the grass. You do. Whoa. Every time I climb the ladder, I feel like a breeze comes. Yeah, it does. So it looks good up here. Hard to tell. When it's all bowed like that, it's hard to get a good thing. Let me just secure this part. Good. We'll be right in at the, the seam. That's actually kind of convenient because we can just cut it out of the edge instead of a hole in the middle of the panel. Oh yeah. It's, that could work out interestingly. It's right, somewhere right so in there. So what's going to be the best tool to cut it? I'm going to grab the nibbler. I think I can do a curve. Okay. I just want to show how straight our screw lines look. Not like a thousand percent perfect, but they look so good. When you have them in pre-drilled holes. So here's where we're at. We have to cut out for this exhaust fan pipe. This is gonna be exhausting. Okay, ready? Yep. This isn't made to turn. It's got a big flat edge down here. So yeah. this is kind of a tight radius for this. Okay. But we did it. We hope. No. It's not bad. This is gonna need support because, look it. If this was in the middle of a sheet, we might be able to get away with this. But since this piece is gonna be overlapping, there's nothing to stop this from okay. sagging down. You see? Yeah. We need to do something to support it. Okay, so let's get a piece of two by four and we'll do one right here below the pipe. And above. And above. Do you want to see me putting that in? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We have bottom support. Now we need top support. Looks like this is gonna have to be notched a little bit to fit in there. So we realized we need a one by for this top one. So we had to cut another one.
Let me just see where it's got to be. A little less. Probably somewhere in there. When you screw it down, it usually compresses a little because of the metal. Partially happy with that. That'll be close enough for the metal though, that the metal will be supported. Let's try it now. Okay. All right, let's uh, actually that won't slide down. Still good. Did something somehow. You what? I did something somehow. Yeah. Professional. Yeah. Feels more than there might be. That's two. This might be our last one. Really? I mean, on the, go around the backyard, look at the roof. Oh, there's the evening sun coming down. We've been here all day, and I think it's time to call it quits. We have four more sheets prepped and ready to go up on this side. I think we're gonna need four full sheets and then a partial sheet, and then we're done with this side of the house. That's huge progress. Yeah. Let me just show you. It's looking really good. 
Even though we're so close to finishing, there just has to be a quitting time and we got to get home and that's it. So next time we're going to finish this half and then we're going to feel good about it. And then we'll know what to do on the other side. And that's going to be awesome to just have all this experience going into that other part. Yeah. So I guess that's all we have for now. Thanks for coming along with us and thanks for all the encouragement along the way. It means a lot to us. Uh, we'll be back soon with another video. So until next time, take care. Bye.